gonna make some mini cream filled cake rolls. These are really cool and fun to make. I'm starting off with a cookie sheet that I sprayed with cooking spray and then lined with just plain old wax paper. You don't have to go the route of parchment paper here. And then I'm going to spray this also. Just a little extra insurance, doesn't hurt. And put this aside while we assemble the cake. One of the first things we have to do is heat up some hot milk. It's called a hot milk sponge. So we have a quarter cup of regular milk, whole milk, and two tablespoons of butter. And I'm going to put it on one of my burners here and let it melt while we start working on the rest of the ingredients. I need some cake flour, three quarters of a cup, and I'm going to sift it. I like to keep my cake flour in a plastic container. It's just easier to get at it than out of the box. And one quarter, one half, three quarter cup. Okay, and we also need some baking powder. And this is one teaspoon of baking powder. And now, just gonna sift it. I'm gonna sift this again when I put it into the batter, but I'm sifting it once now, just to make sure that there's no lumps in here or any foreign objects. Okay, use a spoon at the end and just push it through. And as you can see, I have another pot on my little burner here, and it's got about an inch and a half of water in it. And we're going to start making the sponge cake mixture. I've got my mixing bowl from my mixer, and in here I have three egg yolks and three whole eggs. And then I have one cup of sugar. And I'm going to whisk this, I'm going to turn that water up a little bit. I'm going to whisk this together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on that pot and I'm going to let this warm up until the sugar melts. And when I put my finger in there, the egg, eggs are warm to the touch. So let's get going here and just whisk it often because you don't want to scramble these eggs. So keep an eye on it. Don't go walking away making a phone call because that's not going to be a good thing. And that's melting. And this will take, I would say, probably about three minutes. All right, that looks about warm. I can't hear the sugar anymore, so I know it's melted. So I'm going to shut my burner off, take this off of the water, put it on a towel. And now I'm going to clean this up and get my mixer so that we can proceed with the next step. Well, I've got my mixer and I've got the bowl that we just took off the water. And I'm going to use the whip attachment because we need to whip this at a pretty high speed for a few minutes until it becomes really light and airy and pale, pale yellow. So this will take approximately three to five minutes. is very nice and light and it kind of forms a ribbon on top of itself. So now we need to add the rest of the ingredients. Get rid of this. And we're going to start with that flour. I'm going to take a part of it, maybe a half, third, and sift it again over the batter. This is the hardest part of the cake. The rest of the cake, as you can see, was very, very simple up till now. And the reason I say this is the hardest part 
is that you have to make sure that the ingredients that we're adding now to this batter get totally combined so that when you pour it into the pan, you don't have like a lump of melted butter or a, you know, a piece of flour showing. You don't want that. Your sponge won't be really nice. So it's just a matter of folding, folding, folding. And you notice I'm not doing this. I'm not whipping it. I want it to keep the air it's got. So I'm just folding. Add the rest of it and finish that. And then after the flour is incorporated, we will add the hot milk to the hot milk sponge cake, hot milk and butter. And then we're going to pour it into our pan and put it into the oven, which is heated at 400 degrees. Very hot oven a very quick baked cake. It only takes 10 minutes. And this cake is unlike a Genoise. A Genoise has more fat in it and it also looks like a sponge cake. But the thing with the Genoise is it is also a little bit more challenging to work with because the moment you take it out of the oven you have to turn it out on a um, towel that's been covered in powdered sugar and roll it up real quick because if you don't work fast it will start to crack and it's hard to work with. Now we're going to add the hot milk and the butter. So if you have never made a sponge type cake um, and you, you've always said oh I want to try doing that, I would try a hot milk sponge first before you do a genoise and just Try it and get a little confidence before you do that because if you mess up on the on the genoise you're you're gonna all your confidence is gonna be gone and you're probably gonna say oh I'm never gonna do that again okay this is almost completely done I hope I got everything incorporated now we bring our pan Pour all of our batter in. Take my little offset spatula. You don't have to have one of these. Boy, it does make life easier when you're doing a lot of baking. Let's bring it up to the ends. Don't worry about the sides that the sides are not covered with wax paper, these long sides, because this cake is going to shrink away from the sides and it'll be easy. It's just easy to lift it out with these, these handles later on. Okay, now I'm going to give it a tap. And now we're going to the oven and we're going to put it in that 400 degree oven for 10 minutes and you're going to see a very pretty sponge cake when it comes out. Here's our sponge cake out of the oven. It's beautiful. You can see where it's starting to pull away from the sides of the pan a little bit. That's fine. You're not going to do anything with this until it's absolutely room temperature cold. Uh, so we're just going to have to wait before we continue with our recipe. Here's our hot milk sponge cake, all cool. And now it's time to take it out of the pan. So I'm just going to get a handy knife Go around the edge just to make sure nothing is sticking. And then I want to get a piece of wax paper. I love wax paper. It's great stuff. And a pan. Flip it over. Now we peel off this wax paper. Little jiggly there. That's my jiggle motion. Yeah, there we go. Oops, sliding away on me. Okay. 
And then I'm going to put it onto, I think I'll put another piece of wax paper on it. And there, so I'm gonna flip this over and get rid of that pan. And pull that over, get rid of that. Now let's put the sponge aside while we make the filling. Now in my mixer, I have 12 ounces of cream cheese. Now normally I'd make this with regular white cream cheese, but now they have this flavored cream cheese and so I decided to use the dark chocolate one. So I have an eight ounce package in there. I have one cup of sugar, excuse me, one half cup of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. Put my whisk on. Get this blended first before we add the cream. I've got one and three quarters of a cup of cream. Okay. All right, now I'm going to start adding the cream. I'm going to lower the speed so I'm not wearing it all. I want to blend it in first before I start whipping it. And what we're trying to achieve here is a whipped cream with cream cheese in it. Much like I've done before. Okay, now I can start putting it on a little faster. And we're looking for whipped cream consistency. That's about good. Have a nice whipped cream here. All right, so let's fill our cake. We're gonna fill it first, cut it later. So. You want this all the way to the edges, but you don't want the filling too thick because when you start rolling it later, it'll just all come out. So we're going to lose some of it anyway, but not all of it. And any of this whipped cream you have left over, we can use that as a garnish later. Now we're going to cut this into five strips this way and then one that way. So eyeballing about three and a half inches approximately. One and half. Not the fun part, we're gonna roll. Take each one, roll it up. Don't try to squeeze it, because you'll just squeeze everything out. We're gonna put these on a tray. We're gonna put these into the refrigerator and let them, let the cream set up even more before we go and we finish them. These are gonna end up looking like some of those cakes you used to eat as a kid. We won't mention any names. There's so we get 10 rolls out of this. That's a pretty good amount. You have 12 people, well, you'll just have to make two of these. This is why I like this hot milk sponge. It's so easy to work with. You can see how flexible it is. This would be good to do this. You could make your filling with a vanilla. A regular cream cheese as I said or plain whipped cream if you want to do that or you could fill it with some type of jelly or jam now those are all done I'm going to go wash my hands and then I'm going to put these in the refrigerator 
and let them set up and we'll come back and we'll show you how we finish them. Now we're going to go on to almost finishing the cake rolls. Um, I'm making a ganache here in my pot. That's 12 ounces of chocolate and one cup of heavy whipping cream just melted together and blended. Ganache can be used in different ways. It can be used as a glaze, which is what we're going to use. It can be used as a spread when you let it get a little bit cooler and it spreads more like frosting, or it can be whipped and then piped like a frosting. But we're using it as a glaze today. Now, this is my own little concoction. I have this little rack with a handle. I don't know where I got it, but I've had it like forever. And I use it for doing this sort of thing. Um, you could use um, a cake rack, a small cake rack, and put it over a bowl too if you wanted to. I do this over a bowl so that all the ganache will drip down there and I can keep reusing it. So here we go. We're glazing our cakes. Does it remind you of a childhood treat you used to have? I got it. Now, you don't have to be so perfect that you get every little bit, but just coat it for the most part. And I'm just going to keep continuing doing this, coating them with chocolate. And when they're all done, I'm going to put them back in the refrigerator until the chocolate sets. And then we'll do one final decoration on these. 